Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. In the last video, we learned about aliasing and sampling theorem. In this video, we will try to familiarize the theory using some solved examples. We will also see some special cases and discuss about them. So, let's get started. Question 1 is Consider the analog signal xa equal to 3 times cos of 100 pi t. As you know, a general continuous time signal can be written as xa of t equal to a cos of 2 pi ft. So, comparing with this, our original signal in the question can be written as xa of t equal to 3 times cos of 2 pi into 50 t. Therefore, the frequency of this analog signal is f equal to 50 hertz. Now, our question is to determine the minimum sampling rate required to avoid aliasing. According to sampling theorem, to prevent aliasing, the sampling frequency fs should be greater than or equal to twice the highest input frequency. Therefore, fs should be greater than or equal to 2 times 50 or fs should be greater than or equal to 100 hertz. Hence, the minimum sampling rate required to avoid aliasing is fs equal to 100 hertz. Moving on to the next sub question. Suppose that the signal is sampled at the rate of fs equal to 200 hertz. What is the discrete time signal obtained after sampling? So, we need to find the discrete time signal obtained when the analog signal xa is sampled at 200 hertz. We know x of n equal to x a of n into capital T where T is the sampling period and this is equal to a cos of 2 pi into f into n into capital T which will be equal to a cos of 2 pi into n into f by fs because t is equal to 1 by fs. Therefore, our discrete time signal will be x of n equal to 3 cos of 2 pi n into capital F which is 50 hertz for this signal. 50 hertz divided by fs which is the sampling frequency which is 200 hertz therefore 200 hertz which will be 3 cos of pi by 2 into n therefore our discrete time signal is 3 cos of pi by 2 into n and this is how it looks like in a graph now coming to the third subsection, suppose the signal is sampled at the rate of fs equal to 75 hertz. What is the discrete time signal obtained after sampling? So we are asked to find the discrete time signal obtained when xa is sampled at 75 hertz. Proceeding just like before, x of n equal to 3 cos of 2 pi n into frequency of the analog signal which is 50 hertz divided by the sampling frequency which is 75 hertz so 75 hertz which is equal to 3 cos of 4 by 3 into pi n uh, this can also be written as 3 cos of 2 pi minus 
टू पाई बाय थ्री इनटू एन व्हिच इज इक्वल टू थ्री कोस ऑफ टू पाई बाय थ्री इनटू एन सो दिस इज द डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑप्टेन्ड व्हेन सैम्पल्ड एट ए सैम्पलिंग रेट ऑफ एफ एस इक्वल टू सेवेंटी फाइव हर्ट्स and this discrete time signal will look like this moving on to the last sub part what is the frequency f of a sinusoid such that 0 less than f less than fs by 2 yield samples identical to those obtained in part c so our task is to find a sinusoid whose frequency lies in the range of 0 to fs by 2 here fs is equal to 75 hertz now the same sinusoid should also yield samples identical to 3 cos of 2 pi by 3 into n why because in the question it was asked to find a sinusoid that yield samples identical to those obtained in part c and the discrete time signal obtained in part c was 3 cos of 2 pi by 3 into n okay now a general discrete time signal can be written as x of n equal to a cos of 2 pi into small f into n where small f is the normalized frequency comparing this with the x of n obtained in section c we get f equal to 1 by 3 we also learned in an earlier lecture that normalized frequency f is equal to frequency of the continuous time signal divided by the sampling rate here fs is 75 hertz therefore capital f is equal to small f into fs which is 1 by 3 into 75 which is 25 hertz so this 25 hertz is the frequency of the analog sinusoid we are asked to find in the question and the analog sinusoid is x of t is equal to 3 cos of 2 pi into capital f t which is 3 cos of 2 pi into 25 into t which is 3 cos of 50 pi t this 3 cos 50 pi t will yield the same samples as obtained in section c when sampled at 75 hertz you can see this when you see these two graphs this is the samples obtained in section d and this is the samples obtained in section c you can see that both of these samples look identical hence f equal to 50 hertz is an alias of f equal to 25 hertz for the sampling rate of fs equal to 75 hertz okay now let us see the second question consider the analog signal xa of t equal to 3 cos of 50 pi t plus 10 sin 300 pi t Minus cos hundred pi t. What is the Nyquist rate for this signal? So the signal we have is x a of t equal to three cos two pi into twenty five t plus ten sine two pi into one fifty t minus cos 2 pi into 50 t so the frequencies present in the signal are f1 equal to 25 hertz f2 which is equal to 150 hertz and f3 which is equal to 50 hertz the maximum frequency component among this is f2 equal to 150 hertz therefore by definition the nyquist rate fn is equal to 2 times f max which is 
टू इंटू वन फिफ्टी हर्ट्स विच इज इक्वल टू थ्री हंड्रेड हर्ट्स फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर सिग्नल नाउ लेट एस फोकस ऑन एन इंटरेस्टिंग ऑब्सर्वेशन ऑन नाइक्यूस रेट कंसिडर ए सिग्नल एक्स एफ टी ईक्वल टू टू टाइम्स साइन ऑफ टू हंड्रेड पाई टी विच इज ईक्वल टू टू टाइम्स साइन ऑफ टू पाई इंटू हंड्रेड टी हियर द नाइक्यूस रेट इज एफ एन ईक्वल टू टू इंटू एफ मैक्स विच इज ईक्वल टू टू इंटू हंड्रेड और टू हंड्रेड हर्ट्स लेट एस सैम्पल दिस सिग्नल एट अ रेट ऑफ टू हंड्रेड हर्ट्स दैट इज एफ एस इज टू हंड्रेड हर्ट्स सो अवर डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल विल बी एक्स ऑफ एन ईक्वल टू टू टाइम्स साइन ऑफ टू पाई इंटू हंड्रेड इंटू एन बै टू हंड्रेड विच इज ईक्वल टू टू टाइम्स साइन ऑफ पाई इंटू एन एंड दिस विल ऑलवे बी सीरो बिकॉज एन इज ऑलवे एन इंटीच दैट ईज ऑल द सैम्पल्स विल बी सीरो वैल्यूड This is because we are sampling the analog sinusoid at its zero crossing frequencies and hence we miss the signal component completely okay just remember this result we'll come back to it in a minute now consider another continuous time sinusoid xa of t equal to 2 times sin of 200 pi t plus theta which is equal to 2 times sin of 2 pi into 100 t plus theta that is this is the same signal as before but by some phase difference theta sampling this signal at a sampling frequency of 200 hertz gives us x of n equal to 2 times sin of pi n plus theta where n belongs to an integer let us plot this as you can see here the samples of sinusoid taken at nyquist frequency are not all zero however we still cannot obtain the correct amplitude from the samples i mean if you try to reconstruct the analog signal from these samples one can obtain this signal also right however this is not the analog signal from which we obtain the samples right this is another problem when sampled at nyquist rate so we have seen two potential problems when sampled at the nyquist rate therefore even though the sampling theorem promises distortion free signals at nyquist rate it is best to sample the analog signal at a rate higher than the nyquist rate okay Now let us move to the next question. Consider the analog signal x of t equal to three cos of two thousand pi t plus five sin of six thousand pi t plus ten cos of twelve thousand pi t. The first question is to find the Nyquist rate for this signal. We can write the signal as x of t equal to three cos of 2 pi into 1000 t plus 5 sin of 2 pi into 3000 t plus 10 cos of 2 pi into 6000 t as you can see the maximum frequency f max is 6000 hertz therefore the nyquist rate if n is equal to 2 into 6000 hertz which is 12000 hertz okay okay now the second sub question is assume now that we sample this signal using a sampling rate of 5000 samples per second what is the discrete time signal obtained after sampling we know x of n equal to x a of n t where t is the sampling period which is equal to x a of n by f s where f s is the sampling frequency and here 
fs is equal to 5000 hertz so 5000 hertz therefore after sampling at 5 kilohertz the discrete time signal we get is x of n equal to 3 cos of 2 pi into 1000 into n by 5000 plus 5 sin of 2 pi into 3000 into n by 5000 plus 10 cos of 2 pi into 6000 into n by 5000 which is equal to 3 cos of 2 pi by 5 into n plus 5 sine of 6 pi by 5 into n plus 10 cos of 12 pi by 5 into n. Now let us perform some trigonometric manipulation on this expression. Therefore we have 3 cos of 2 pi by 5 into n plus 5 sin of 2 pi minus 4 pi by 5 into n plus 10 cos of 2 pi plus 2 pi by 5 into n which is equal to 3 cos of 2 pi by 5 into n plus 5 sin of minus 4 pi by 5 into n plus 10 cos of 2 pi by 5 into n. So the final expression is x of n equal to 13 cos 2 pi by 5 into n minus 5 sin of 4 pi by 5 into n. Therefore, this is our discrete time signal obtained after sampling at 5 kilohertz. Now coming to the third subsection, what is the analog signal Ya of t that we can reconstruct from the samples if we use ideal interpolation? So the sample we obtained was x of n. Let me copy this. This is equal to 13 into cos of 2 pi into 1 by 5 into n minus 5 sine of 2 pi into 2 by 5 into n. Here this 1 by 5 and 2 by 5 are normalized frequencies. Now to reconstruct an analog signal back from a discrete signal, we know the relation normalized frequency f is equal to frequency of the continuous time signal by sampling frequency or capital F is equal to small f into fs. So to reconstruct the analog signal all we have to do is multiply these normalized frequencies with the sampling rate which is 5000 hertz. Okay let's do that. So x of t is equal to 13 cos of 2 pi into 1 by 5 into sampling frequency which is 5000 hertz into t minus 5 sin of 2 pi into 2 by 5 into sampling frequency which is 5000 hertz into t which is 13 cos 2000 pi t minus 5 sin 4000 pi t. Now if we plot this signal it will look like this. 
and you can see that this signal is drastically different from our original signal. This distortion is caused by aliasing because we sampled at a rate lower than the Nyquist rate. Hence, we missed this component in our discrete signal. This is very evidently seen in our reconstructed signal as only the 1 kHz and 2 kHz components are present in this signal. Okay, that's all for this lecture. In the next video, we will learn about discrete time systems. I hope that all the concepts that were taught in this video are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you out. If you found this lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Topperly and have a great day.